Meep. The Ring is one of those horror films that I knew I would never forget from the moment I first watched it. There's something so simultaneously enticing and yet disturbing about the film's iconography and its oppressive hypnotic tone, and it just seared itself into my brain. Beyond being a remake of an already popular Japanese horror film, the version I personally prefer, which itself was an adaptation of the 1991 novel, the film's success is evident purely from the experience experience it provides, it disturbs its audience on a psychological and subliminal level in a way few horror films even attempt to. Today, exactly 20 years after its initial release, The Ring remains unique and memorable, and I feel like just watching it would explain why. But when I rewatched it last year around Halloween, I really started to analyze the intricacies of The Ring, much like the characters in the film do. The details beyond its scares and thrills and into its meaning. For some reason, something really clicked with me thematically and metatextually in a way that I had never really been aware of before, and that's the fact that this film is essentially a horror movie about horror movies and the paranoia slash controversy surrounding them. Now, it didn't take me 20 years to come to this new understanding of the film. I did not see the American remake back in 2002 when it released because one, I was a child, Two, I was absolutely terrified of horror films back then, which was partially due to the fact that three, I grew up in a small, somewhat backwoods midwestern town under the roof of parents who were extremely paranoid and controlling about what I watched and listened to. And who can really blame them? I mean, the news had been rampantly warning about the dangers of media influence on children for at least 20 years by that point. It was slasher films in the 80s. The kids call them slasher or splatter movies. And they get together to watch them at gross-out parties. The movies are extremely violent, truly provocative, and have graphic displays of mutilation. Mortal Kombat in the 90s. Kids relish their victory and their bloody choice. Should they pull out their opponent's heart? Or simply rip his head off just to see his spinal cord dangle in a pool of blood? How do you feel about cutting his head off? And then Grand Theft Auto and Eminem during my childhood in the 2000s. This is the nation's top-selling video game. Kill as many people as you can, get as many stars as you can. And millions of kids are mastering it by learning to slaughter bystanders. Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! were satanic, Harry Potter was gonna make children join the occult, kids in the 2000s just couldn't catch a break. But really, shit hasn't changed. Not one bit. Some have criticized the film for romanticizing Gotham's clown prince of crime. Some fearing the film may become an inspiration for real-world criminals. Humans perceiving danger and the changes a new generation will bring is a tale as old as humanity itself, and I think no horror film tackles this endless fear better than The Ring. Now maybe it's just because I did grow up in the 2000s, the era that the film itself is a product of, but for some reason I've really gravitated towards the parallel between the way that controversial films, games, and music were societally treated in my childhood and the way the tape in The Ring is treated. This cursed object that, once you watch it, seals your fate. The kind of stuff I heard all the time growing up. If I watch a scary movie, or play a violent video game, or listen to vulgar music, I'll become a deranged killer. Or another popular thing you'd hear on the news a lot in that time was that you'd open a portal for demons to come through, or something. The reason I say The Ring tackles this fear so well, especially when it comes to horror movies, is because it seems to be thematically tied to every idea in the film. From the very opening scene where we see two teen girls, one telling the other a scary story about a cursed videotape, leading to one of their mysterious deaths. Then to a journalist and single mother named Rachel, who has a somewhat emotionally distant son named Aiden, who, to Rachel's dismay, ends up watching the cursed tape. No! Why, baby, why? Why? I can sleep. Rachel throughout the film is attempting to uncover the tape's origins, terrified of what might happen if it continues to spread throughout the world. Violence and violent images permeate more and more aspects of our lives. And I think it's time to draw the line. Half of American households now have video cassette recorders. And for many children, they're a ticket to R-rated gore that the kids are too young to see at the movies. 
Do you know what your children are watching? And hell, even the villain of the story, the creator of the tape, is a demonic child named Samara. Much of the mystery of the film revolves around Samara's intentions, why and how she became so evil. Was she made that way, or is she malevolent by nature? The exact questions we often ask ourselves when facing seemingly evil people in reality. I think the film very clearly illustrates that Samara, despite suffering a lot of trauma at the hands of her abusive parents, was evil from birth. She isn't looking to find redemption. Her curse will not be lifted. She only seeks vengeance by inflicting her trauma on the world, with the ultimate reveal being that the only way to survive the tape's affliction is to make a copy of the tape and show it to someone else. And as always, perhaps I'm just looking too much into this, but especially this reveal I find very thematically poignant. The film's horror stems from the vicious cycle of trauma, the generational inflicted pain that only leads to more inflicted pain. The ring itself being obvious symbolism for this cycle. What the ultimate reveal of the film tells me is that the only way for us to truly break the cycle of pain is not by repressing it, but by externalizing it, by shining a light on it and making it known to and felt by the world, making it truly understood. To bring it full circle to the fear of violent media, I think this is saying that the answer to the violence of the world and the fear it induces is not to suppress it or shelter ourselves from said violent media, but rather to understand why it is so resonant. And through this same lens, I can kind of see Samara creating the tape as a metaphor for the creative process of horror movie writers or directors, because that's a big part of what horror is all about, highlighting the things that make us afraid by externalizing them into fiction, which in turn helps us better understand those fears. Horror media is not the cause of real world horrors, it is a response to them. Not to say that all the ideas presented in every horror film are all good ideas and that you shouldn't be thoughtful or conscientious about what ideas are being presented, and, and also not to say that kids should be able to watch any horror film they want with absolutely zero guidance, it's just that there is no inherent danger in engaging with horror. Horror films aren't like the tape in the ring. You will not die in seven days just from viewing them. They're not otherworldly objects created by demons. In fact, what often terrifies us in our favorite scary movies is merely a reflection, not just of the very real world around us, but of ourselves. And I think that the ring perfectly encapsulates all of these ideas in its fourth wall breaking ending. What about the person we show it to? What happens to them? <laughs> <laughs>